This is 5 Minute Power Platform, and today we're going to use Power Virtual Agents to put an agent on a Power Apps portal, and the agent's going to pull data from Common Data Service. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on this portal that I built as part of a previous project. And you can watch the build out of this forms automation portal, which takes uh, forms out of uh, paper, PDFs, and directly in this model driven app here. And then I also build a portal on top of that data and also show Twitter in this portal. And the forms this uses are these uh, tweet request forms from 1957, which a lot of people accuse me of making up. They don't think it's authentic, but either way, it's a simple form that's got four fields that request a tweet a handle, an email address, and then the person's first name. And so what we're going to do is we're going to build a virtual agent that does this. It first identifies the topic, it then requests the person's Twitter handle, it queries CDS to find that person's most recent tweet and its status, and then it returns the result to the person. So to get started, we'll start here in Power Virtual Agents. And what I'll do, I'm going to create a new bot. And if you're coming in for the first time, that's going to immediately come, come in and prompt you to create a new bot. And we'll just call this uh, VA video. And then the bot will create in a few minutes and it'll have a set of default topics. We're, we're going to go through the process of adding an additional topic. So here's our bot. Here's the list of topics it comes with. And you can test them out here. Like you could say, uh, you know, when are you closed is one of the sample ones. And you'll see that the bot is then going to start working right here and you can test it. So let's start by adding in a new topic for testing out tweets. So we'll call this one tweet status. And so the trigger phrases or the things it's going to listen to to direct it down this topic are things like, uh, you know, what is my tweet status? Is my tweet tweeted? Um, uh, has it been Twitterfied, tweeted? No, that's good. That's five or ten, but this should be enough for this purpose. Now we're going to go to the authoring canvas. And the authoring canvas is a lot like working in a flow, but it's really doing the logic that the virtual agent is going to execute. And so here, the first thing it's going to do once it loads is it's going to give us our trigger phrases, and now it wants us to populate a message. But rather than a message, what we'll do is we'll immediately ask for the person's Twitter handle. So we're going to ask a question. Now when you ask a question, so we'll say, what is your Twitter handle? Twitter handle. Now there are some options here. So you can give it some multiple choice options and it'll pick those out of the answer. Uh, it'll pick out an age, a city, a bunch of different things. And so if someone gives them a natural language sentence back, it will then pick out the city or the dollar, the amount of money and that sort of thing. There isn't one for Twitter handle. So we're going to take the user's entire response and assume that the only thing the person's going to type is their Twitter handle and not my Twitter handle is. And so that's going to store that in a variable we're now going to name V handle. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take that and we're going to call an action and we're going to call a flow. And so we can see here, call an action is going to list ex uh, additional or current flows that are relevant here. So ones that are already connected to power virtual agents, we're going to create a new one here. So that's going to open up a new flow initialized for power virtual agents. So we have our input here and we have our output here. Let's rename this. We'll call this uh, virtual agents tweet video. And then the input parameter is going to be the handle. So we'll do a, choose a text input and we'll label it handle, handle. And the output is going to be the, just the return string. And so we'll just call it return. And that's going to be the string that we're going to populate through this, uh, through this flow. So let's uh, first initialize a variable and that's going to be a return string. And so we'll do initialize variable and we'll call this return string. It's going to be a string and let's initialize with a valuable variable, a value that says no results found for handle and we'll put in the handle here. And that way, if we never set this variable in our loop below, uh, the user will see this no results found message. So next then we're going to query the common data service. And so what we'll do is we'll list records. We'll select the current environment, our entity name, which is the one that our portal is using this one here. And then the first thing we're going to do is we're going to filter out. Uh, now this OData filter query doesn't use the friendly filled field names. Like if I go back to the makerspace and look at inside CDS, and I look at this entity, we've got the display names and we've got the actual database names. For these OData filter queries, we need to use the actual database names. And in particular, our handle is called CR19 or CR917 handle. And so I'm going to copy this. There it is. And we'll put this back here. And we'll look, we'll filter out those where they're equal in single quotes, the handle that we're given. 
Now our bot is only going to return the most recent one that matches that. So the top count will be one, just return one record. And we want the most recent one. So we want the one that was created last. And we could see here that the created on is named created on without spaces. And so we could put in created on and then descending. And that way these will be filtered descending with the most recent one on top. And we'll pick off the top one here. So finally, then let's populate that return variable. And so we'll uh, set that variable. And so there's our return string. And what we're going to do is we're going to do the tweet status colon the tweet text. And so here is our tweet status variable, variable, our tweet status value. And you see what it did is it applied an apply to each to that as well. Because list records could return more than one record, and Flow knows that, even though we're limiting it to the top one. And so this apply to each will only run at most one time. Now we could also use the first expression to limit that so that doesn't happen. But just to keep it easy, we'll just let that apply to each pop in there. So we're going to do the tweet status, colon, and then the tweet text. And then we're going to return that as our return string here. And so that'll get returned to Power Virtual Agents. So let's save this. Now one thing to know is before this will show up for virtual agents, it has to be inside of a solution. And if you haven't worked with solutions before, they're a good thing to know about as you build a more enterprise scale uh, power apps and to use application lifecycle management to allow you to combine many components of your power app into one package. You can create a solution just by going to new solution here, give it a display name, we'll call this virtual agent video, give it a publisher, you can create a new one, uh, which I've already done, or use one of the existing ones and then hit create. Now once you have your solution, you can then add an existing flow. And so I'm going to add the one we just created. It'll be listed here outside solutions. And there's our virtual agents tweet, uh, tweet video one created 40 seconds ago. And now once that exists within a solution, we'll be able to see it uh, inside of our virtual agent. So now when we come back to virtual agent, let's go in now we'll call an action. We can see here, here's virtual agents tweet video. And we have the input and output that we defined in it. So it's asking for the handle. That's our V handle that we defined right here. And then it's asking for an output for the return. This is what it's going to bring back. And so now we need to send that back by showing a message to the user. And the message is going to be the return from the flow. And then when we're done, we'll end the conversation with the survey. So now let's save this and we can test it real quick. Say, what is my, is my tweet status? So it should ask us for our handle. And we can follow it along here because we should see it trace along here. So it's stuck here. It says, what is your Twitter handle? I'm going to say topness. You can see it come here. It's going to go over to the flow, executes that query against the common data service. And it's going to give us this. But you notice that it gives us the status ID and then the tweet. We don't want the status ID. We want the actual status name, which is going to be uh, tweeted or disapproved or something like that. And so if we come back here to our, um, to our solution and we look at this, we can look at the past run of the flow. So it should have one run. That's the one we just did 24 seconds ago. And we see list records here. So that's what pulled it back from CDS. And we can see here all of the data that's come, coming back. Now, some of these aren't listed in the dynamic content pane. And in particular, what we want to see is this field here, which is this status label. And so we did tweet status and it showed this value here. But what we want is tweet status label, which is the name tweeted for this one. And so we can replace tweet status with tweet status label if we do a little bit of extra work here. And so I'm going to open up Notepad here and we will just collect this tweet status label. Let's go back into edit mode on this. If we take a look at when we set the variable, we can take a look at the code that's underneath this. And we see it's at items apply to each, see our tweet status. We want this to be that other variable that wasn't shown, this, or this other field, see our 917 tweet status label. And so let's replace this. And so if we just copy this here, paste that in there, and let's just replace see our, tweet see our 917 tweet status with tweet status label. And now let's edit this. We'll replace this one with what we just pasted in here. So we're going to copy this and paste it in there. And now let's try this again. And now we should actually get the name back or the actual name of the status. And so we'll come back here to our Power Virtual Agent. Let's say, what is my uh, tweet status? 
give it my handle as it flows through. And now we actually get the status name, even though that wasn't available in the dynamic content pane, it's still uh, available to us and the actual tweet itself. And so now we're ready to publish this and we can't use it anywhere else until we publish it. So let's publish this and then let's embed it into the portal. And so to embed it in the portal, let's come back here to our apps and we'll go to our portal app here and let's edit it. Now the page we want to edit is the one that has the Twitter, the list of twi uh, tweet list on it. We're going to replace this with the bot. And so that page is here, tweet list. We can see tweet list here is just an iframe. And so what we need is the URL of the bot to replace that. And so if we come back here to our bot, we look at channels. You look at all the places you can put this, including into Teams, Slack, and all that. We're going to do a custom website. And the URL that we need is this URL right here, embedded in here. And so we just copy this. And then we'll go back to our portal. And we'll replace this link with our bot. And now our bot is embedded in the portal. So let's browse website. And let's try creating another one here. New tweet to test this out from Phil. And we'll submit it. So now let's test it over here and say, is my tweet tweeted? Put that in and it's going to query CDS and it should get this most recent one because we sorted by created on descending. We'll give the status and it's already tweeted out and it's already working. So in that way, we really quickly built on top of an existing application that's on the common data service. We built a, a virtual agent spot and we embedded it on an existing portal. Hope this was useful. This is a quick example of how to use virtual agents on top of uh, something we already built. If you want to see the full build up for the portal, there's a link right here. Thanks for watching.